The Second World War is one of the most well-known and extensive studied conflicts in history. However, there are still many aspects of the war that remain shrouded in mystery. One such aspect is the role of drugs in the conflict. While it is common knowledge that soldiers were given drugs to help them stay awake and perform better, there is much more to the story than that. In this video, we will explore the concealed role of drugs in the Second World War. We will discuss how drugs were used to treat injuries, enhance performance, and even control populations. Specifically, we will examine the use of amphetamines, morphine, and LSD during the war. But just before we get started, subscribe to our channel, join our community, and become an expert in history. During World War II, the use of stimulant drugs became quite popular among various armed forces, including the Japanese, American, and British militaries. However, it was the Germans who first embraced the use of these drugs during the early stages of the war. Even though drug use was generally frowned upon in Nazi Germany, the military leaders saw its potential benefits for their soldiers. Speed, also known as amps, pep pills, uppers, and lid poppers, was a brand new drug that debuted in the late 1930s. It quickly gained a reputation as a miracle drug, especially since other drugs were discouraged or illegal. Speed had an interesting connection to the Nazi slogan, Germany Awake, as it energized and boosted the confidence of the soldiers, making them feel superior to others. While speed was associated with alertness and attentiveness, other drugs like alcohol or white junk were more for escapism. During World War II, the concept of creating super soldiers was quite appealing to the military, and speed was seen as a way to give ordinary soldiers extraordinary abilities. Hitler's statement, we don't need weak people, we only want the strong, contributed to the idea that drug addiction was synonymous with power and strength. Interestingly, it was American athletes participating in the 1936 Summer Games in Berlin who played a significant role in popularizing speed in Germany. Before the 1936 Olympics, German chemist Friedrich Hauschild discovered that American athletes were using a performance-enhancing drug called Benzedrine. Later, during the war, American soldiers, particularly Air Force pilots, also used Benzedrine to help them stay awake and alert for longer periods. Hauschild studied this substance after making this fascinating discovery and created amps, which are very similar to amphetamine. At the time, Hauschild worked for the Berlin-based pharmaceutical firm Temer Work, which trademarked the term pervitine for this intriguing chemical in 1937. And so, the use of stimulant drugs like speed gained popularity and prominence during World War II as various militaries sought ways to enhance the performance and endurance of their soldiers. Pervitine quickly gained popularity in Germany after its introduction thanks to extensive advertising. Within a few months, the drug was well known and its sales skyrocketed once it became available in stores without a prescription. Even chocolates laced with speed were sold, contributing to its widespread use. However, Pervitine's most significant impact was yet to come, as it played a crucial role in Germany's blitzkrieg tactics from 1939 to 1945. The Third Reich's military prowess stunned Europe, and historians often credit Nazi Germany's rise to power during this period to advanced technology, efficiency, and innovative combat strategies. The Wehrmacht's plan left no room for error. Every detail from ammunition supplies to offensive actions timing and even performance-enhancing drugs dosage was carefully calculated. Pervitine was used as a wartime supplement by the Germans, leading to increased energy, reduced appetite, and diminished sleepiness. It also boosted morale, making soldiers more susceptible to Nazi propaganda. Pervitine was legally available and heavily advertised across Germany until 1941, with billboards all over Berlin promoting its use. Norman Oler's book, Blitzed, Drugs in Nazi Germany, claimed that the entire country was once addicted to speed. While it might seem amusing today, Pervitine was not initially intended as a military drug. It was designed to compete with Coca-Cola, a popular American soft drink already enjoyed in Germany. Interestingly, it was Dr. Theodore Morell, Hitler's personal physician, who gave Pervitine to the dictator. The drug had been tested on students to study its effects on concentration and effort levels. Otto Renke, a leading figure in general and defensive physiology at Berlin's Academy of Military Medicine, quickly recognized the drug's potential to improve German soldiers' performance on the front lines. As a result, Hitler mandated that his armies use pervitine, further solidifying the drug's position in Nazi Germany's military plans. 
Otto Ranke saw the potential in Pervertine, but wasn't entirely sure if it could truly help him create a super army. To test its effectiveness, he ordered the drug to be mixed into field rations, allowing soldiers to consume it up to twice a day. Remarkably, the troops' behavior changed significantly after only a short time on Pervertine. They became fearless and euphoric, even in the face of extreme danger. Ranke's vision of chemically enhanced soldiers to overpower the enemy was now a reality. These energized soldiers could walk up to 60 kilometers and work non-stop for three days. This newfound endurance proved pivotal when the Germans invaded Poland in 1939, swiftly moved through the French Ardennes in 1940, and fought continuously for 11 days during the Balkan Campaign of 1941. As a result of his discovery's success, Ranke started taking Pervertine himself. He envisioned sitting alongside Hitler in the near future, helping to realize the Nazi dream of global dominance. As letters from that time reveal, Ranke and his office staff likely worked long hours under immense pressure and relied on prescription drugs to cope with the demands of their jobs. Pervertine's impact on military strategy was undeniably significant, enabling soldiers to push beyond their physical limits and, in turn, shaping the course of World War II. While Pervertine played a significant role in Hitler's Germany, it was inevitable that the drug would have negative consequences. Early reports indicated side effects such as fatigue, heart pain, and circulation problems. These findings, with the help of the Reich Health Führer, Leonardo Conti, eventually led to the restriction and ban of Pervertine in 1941. Despite warnings that the drug was no longer available without a prescription, many people disregarded the new regulations. Even though Hitler and the Nazi party had been promoting anti-drug propaganda since 1933, the rules were largely ignored. Germany had become dependent on Pervertine, and the sudden ban likely resulted in numerous people leaving the country. Ironically, Hitler himself struggled with addiction. At home, many believed that the prohibition was ineffective and did not diminish Germany's power. The military, too, was reliant on drugs and seemed indifferent to the ban and regulations, particularly since they provided immediate benefits to their operations. When rationing began in June of 1941, consumption skyrocketed due to the disastrous Operation Barbarossa, which lasted until December that year. The ban on Pervertine also had a darker side, potentially involving conspiracies. The widespread addiction to Pervertine among Germans might have placed excessive pressure on the drug's manufacturers. It's plausible that the fake prohibition was implemented to ensure more supplies were available for troops fighting the Red Army at home. As early as 1941, the Reich was aware of Pervertine's dangerous side effects and its potential to cause addiction, but its reliance on the drug persisted throughout the war. Despite the negative effects, amps continued to fuel the country while troops suffered heart attacks or committed suicide during psychotic episodes. The Blitzkrieg relied on constant movement from tank infantry regardless of the time of day. This strategy ultimately led to the fall of Denmark and Norway in 1940. In just one month, the Nazi army swiftly and effectively conquered Holland, Belgium, and France. When the Germans marched into France, the French defenses crumbled under the relentless attack despite having no reinforcements. In merely 11 days, German tanks traversed 240 miles of challenging terrain, including the forested Ardennes region. British and French forces, believing the Ardennes impassable, were easily bypassed. Paratroopers often landed ahead of the main force, wreaking havoc behind enemy lines. The British press alleged that these troops were heavily drugged, making them fearless and wild like Vikings. Even Churchill was astounded by the sheer number of armored vehicles that quickly cut off communications and destroyed the countryside. In his autobiography, he describes it as the most significant shock he had ever experienced. The use of Pervertine came with apparent drawbacks, such as the potential for addiction. Daily administration of the drug would significantly impact soldiers' lives and their ability to function. When the Germans ran out of supplies and were forced to retreat, chaos ensued within their ranks. In German concentration camps, inmates frequently experienced nausea, hallucinations, anxiety, depression, and a general decline in cognitive abilities. Despite Conti's efforts, military consumption of Pervertine persisted at high levels. As the situation worsened, there was a steady increase in service members' deaths due to heart attacks, accidents, and military blunders. Pervertine controlled the army rather than the other way around. Through interrogations, Morell discovered that Hitler's pervertine addiction contributed to poor strategic decisions, leading to the enemy's victory at Normandy and ultimately the fall of Berlin. 
While initially effective, the Vermox Miracle Drug ultimately helped bring down the Third Reich. The only beneficiary of the drug's constant production was Temmler Work, which reaped enormous profits. Isn't it fascinating how the very substance that once fueled the Nazi war machine eventually contributed to its downfall? Share your thoughts on the impact of pervertine on World War II and how it changed the course of history. Don't forget to join the conversation below and let us know what you think.